ಪರ್ಯಾಯೇ ಜ್ಞಾನಲಿಂಗೇಶ್ವರಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ಗುರು ಪ್ರಚೋದಯೇ ಓ ಯೋಗ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗೀತಾನಂದ ಗಿರಿ ಗುರು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜೈ we have been looking at various practices concepts over the last many weeks now and we have taken time to go deep into the concepts related to the energy flows and uh, today is a special sharing from my side because last night devasena reminded me that today is my star birthday for those who don't know what is a star birthday um in indian system uh, when a, an individual is born more than the sun sign and other things uh, they are born under one of the 27 or 28 stars there are two variations 27 28 but i like 27 because 27 sort of goes with what we are doing the 27 rounds but there's also a version with 28 stars the two versions and so when we are born more than the zodiac sign and whether what rashi you are rashi is basically your zodiac um more sort of importance is given to what star you are born under so i was born under what would be called the kad and today from last evening in fact uh, only later i realized last evening i was talking to kaustubh and my dear yoga family in conversation on tradition and this star had actually started so it was also a birthday that i shared uh, with my dear subodh a tiwari of kaivala dama another one amazing dear yoga friend of mine so coming back the star birthday and uh, so i thought okay it's good get a chance to meet all of you and these meetings are becoming more and more uh, special because what we are realizing is that uh, even if we cannot meet in person we are meeting in person so we have here magic happening that we are meeting in person without meeting in person i think that's an amazing state of being and if this had been discussed 50 years ago people would have locked you up saying you are mad and such a thing cannot happen and doesn't exist and i think that is why we need to look at all our traditional concepts and realize that sometimes we may think oh they don't exist i remember as a kid growing up and listening to my father teaching and sometimes he would be saying such outlandish outrageous things in class that is like swamiji why are you making it up and in fact some of his students used to say swamiji you are lying about it and as years have gone on it has been very interesting to find out that what we thought was outlandish is actually the truth and it's just that he was in a position he could see it that is what a rishi is a person who can see they can perceive the highest and they have that capacity because when you elevate your consciousness and patanjali says a lot about this in the yoga sutras that you are elevating your consciousness until your purest consciousness sattva tamasika rajasika sattvika your sattva is as clear as pure as the pure consciousness of purusha itself so what is happening is you are elevating your consciousness until you are equivalent 
to the consciousness of the Purusha itself. That is basically Kaivalya. So what is being done is, you are elevating yourself until you are at that level. It is like, say you have a building that is 100 stories high and you are at ground zero. You need to go up the elevator. What is the elevator in yoga? Consciousness. So the elevator in con uh, yoga is consciousness. We need to go up that elevator, elevate ourselves to get to that level of 100. Now what most people want to do is they want to bring that 100 down to ground zero. And this is sort of the popular approach. The so-called democratic popular approach is bring it down. So what we do? Consciousness that is on 100th floor, you bring it down to ground zero. Now what is the level of that consciousness now? Ground zero. It is no longer level 100 when you have brought it down to zero. And we have forgotten this. That we are trying to bring these concepts down, this reality down to the most mundane level and then it is not what it was in the first place. Major issue with yoga in modern times is we have tried to water down yoga so much, dilute it down so much that we have actually lost the essence. It's got so diluted it is not what it was in the first place. You know the story of the village. It could be any place in the world but because I have grown up in India, I tend to put my stories in Indian context. And it was decided in the village that everybody had to bring one mug like this. One mug of milk and pour it into a container so that it could be used for certain rituals and other things in the village. There were about thousand people in the village. And so one guy started thinking. He said, 999 are going to bring a mug of milk. If I put one mug of water in it, it will not make a difference. Each and every individual started thinking about it. So the next day, what the village had was 1000 mugs of water without any milk in it at all. Each person thinks, my diluting it will not matter. Everybody thinks the same and then yoga becomes a yoga. <laughs> that living entity of yoga that Kaustub and I were talking about and I think today we'll have it, a recorded version online for those who missed it. And we hope to have another session in a few weeks. I hope it will manifest. Coming back to where we were, that was my side story today. And I, I love my in In the ashram, during the six-month course, uh, every day in the afternoon, 4 or 4.30 to 6, 6.30, um, I teach a class and officially it is the mantra class. So we look at mantras, we go through the yoga sutras and um, the Purusha Suktam and the Dasha Sloki and the Ganesha Pancharatnam and so many. And then we go into the chakras, we go into the laya, the mantra laya and other things. And in between comes the yantra. So uh, often people are asked, what is, the, what, what is Dr. Ananda's class? And I know many times my students say it is his storytelling class. So it's Dr. Ananda's storytelling class. Um, because for me, I believe that stories are an essential way for us to learn. If we want to learn, stories are just the best way because they really take the concepts deep. And the other thing one needs to always understand is retain the integrity of the teachings. Retain the highest level of quality of the teachings. But they need to be given in a simple digestible form.
so the simplicity is not simplifying the teachings but simplifying the way they are digested assimilated and absorbed by the individual and that is why i love einstein who said if you cannot explain it to a 6 year old you don't know it and people love to so sound so wise using the most complicated concepts and terminologies and they lose everybody including themselves in their teaching and i am like why can't you bring it down to simple see if you have understood it you will explain it simply if you have not understood it you will complicate it for everybody okay so with that whenever i complicate things you know that i have not understood them whenever i simplify them maybe there's chance that dr ananda knows what he's saying okay we have been working on the nadi shuddhi and the nadi shodhan or rather nadi shodhana nadi shuddhi nadi shodhana the gross cleansing nadi shuddhi the fine cleansing what are we cleansing the nadis what are the nadis psychic energy channels how are they related to the physical well they are correlated with anything in the physical body where there is the presence of flow for example the nervous system the sensory and the motor then your arteries veins and capillaries and lymphatics these are just correlations why do we need to clear purify the nadis well if you don't purify them there will be blockages and there will be losses so just as you want your pipeline to maintain its integrity internally and externally the same thing we want to maintain the integrity of the nadi system what are the nadis carrying they are carrying energy what is energy energy is speeded up matter so matter at the highest speed the highest vibration is energy energy slowed down to the slowest vibration is matter e is equal to mc square einstein okay scientist come yogi scientist to yogi okay with this background what are we doing nadi shodhan nadi shodhan how are we doing we are breathing in right out left why in right out left prana apana what is prana and apana equal and opposite energy fluxes positive flux negative flux and we are trying to make sure that the positive and the negative terminals of our energy circuits are working as best as they can what is the next thing you start using the savitri pranayama why savitri pranayama first of all in the gita and the tradition it is the foundation of all pranayama practice why is it the foundation of pranayama practice in the gita and the tradition not because swami ji just made it up no because savitri is related to the solar energy we are a solar being we need to connect to our solar system the inner sun has to connect to the outer sun there has to be an energy exchange and when that energy exchange is happening without blocks we are healthy physically mentally emotionally socially spiritually financially metaphysically whatever you want fine so savitri is the pattern of breathing in which we are attuning to our inner sun so that the energy can flow properly what is the energy of savitri it is the life giving energy it is the life enhancing energy it is the life retaining energy it is the life regaining energy as in the story of savitri and her husband satyavan who she got back from yamaraja the god of death himself fine now we are using savitri then what do we do next we start off with a slow count this count again the starting point we take 8 4 swami ji always like the 8 4 and most of the time in his teachings 8 4 8 4 was like the staple number i used to hear whenever i was running around the ashram and he was teaching i used to hear the 8 4 count going on in class and people doing different practices what i found is that we humans have degenerated degenerated even in just the generation between swami ji teaching and me teaching and 8 4 has become tough for too many people so i have more 
moved into the 6-3 pattern for most of my teaching because I feel that 8-4, most people are not able to do it. So if they are not able to do it at the beginning, you lose them and they lose the opportunity. This is not marketing. This is just trying to help other people. Okay, Marketing is the last thing on my mind. It's not on my mind at all and that is why the divine takes care. Give, give, it will come back. Fine. So, the 8-4 is a good place to start and so we can work towards it. The 8-4, 8-4. So, what that means is you are breathing in for 8, holding for 4, breathing out for 8, holding for 4. Puraka, Kumbaka, Rechaka, Shunyaka. You can think of it as a rectangle if you want to think about it. In, hold, out, hold. It's like a rectangle. Sukha Puravaka was a square. This is more like a rectangle, just a mental image. 8, 4, 8, 4. Then what you do is after a few rounds, you convert it into a 6, 3, 6, 3. What are you doing? You are speeding up the process. When you are doing 8, 4, 8, 4, say you take on an average a second for each count. 8, 4, 8, 4. So that is 24 seconds for one full cycle of breath. Which means basically, in one minute, you are breathing about three times. Compare this with the 15 to 18 times most people are breathing. That is why even 8-4 requires practice because you have reduced your breathing rate by a huge amount. From say the person was breathing 15 to 18, you have five or six times slowed it down to about three times per minute when you are doing 8-4-8-4. No wonder the metabolism changes, everything changes. 8-4 becomes 6-3-6-3. Six, three, six, three. 18 seconds for one round. It then becomes 4-2-4-2. Four, two, four, two. 12 seconds for one round. Then 2-1-2-1. Two, one, two, one. And then 1-1. One, one. And then going as fast as possible. Like done in Bastrika and Kapalbati, that type of rapid it's basically two breaths per second that is like sort of the mental image you can keep you are breathing at around 120 rounds per minute okay that is the speed so what you have done you started off with three breaths per minute and you have gone to 120 per minute imagine the change that you have produced here that is the nadi shodhan component the nadi shodhan component is where you have gone from three to 120, 40 times faster, 40 times faster. So what you have done is you have really, really jetted the water. When you, you know, clean, you take your hose pipe and you put that jetter on the edge or you just press it like that and the water jets so that you can clean things better. If the water is just oozing, it's not going to clean, it will stagnate. The oozing water will stagnate, it will not clean. Same thing here. You want the energy to be flowing in such a dynamic jet way that the whole system is cleansed. Okay. Now at the end of that, one is you could stop and you take in a deep breath. One of my very dear students has been asking me this three times already because, you know, maybe I have not been clear enough. The problem with online is people think they can be listening to me and cooking or listening to me and going to the toilet and things like that and then they missed things okay and that's the problem because I, I cannot see you here now if it was zoom I could see you unless you put your camera off fine so coming back here so what we are doing is at the end of this rapid 120 per minute type of breathing you take in a deep breath and you hold Then when you breathe out with the Mukha Vastrika, okay, tomorrow morning, Sunday, tomorrow Sunday, yeah, morning at 7, on the site uh, that the Yogi Care Facebook page, I'll be offering a full session on the Vastrikas in the Gita Nanda tradition and I will go into detail on Mukha Vastrika at that time because I realized I have not introduced the Mukha Vastrika and it is a very important practice. 
so this way you can conclude the nadi shodhan on its own but if you are going to continue it after the rapid breathing what you start to do is you do not take a break there you do not take a break there what you do is that from that rapid you start breathing one one then two one two one then four two four two then six three six three then eight four eight four ten five ten five twelve six twelve six sixteen eight sixteen eight. what we have done is we have now done the reverse from that rapid fire breathing you have started slowing down and when you do 16 8 16 16 16 seconds for one breath which means basically three breaths even if it takes 40 seconds at 120 which means three breaths in two minutes let that sink in three breaths in two minutes from 120 breaths per minute so 120 speed has come down to 1.5 so what you have done is you have done the grass cleansing you have kicked out all the stuff cleaned out all the stuff and now what you are doing is you are stabilizing the system you are taking care of all the leakages making sure that there is no leak making sure that everything is well and intact that the integrity of your membrane is perfect when the cell loses its membrane it's destroyed the integrity of the membrane of your nadi a concept you can keep mentally and what you are doing is you are stabilizing so you are slowing down the process and you are doing the fine cleaning you are finding all the cobwebs that need to be taken out you are finding all the stuff that needs to be patched up you need all the cleansing and you have stabilized yourself by the end when you come to the nadi shuddh the grass and the subtle cleaning nadi shodhana nadi shuddh and at that point all these energy channels each and every one of those 729 energy channels they are stable they are viable they are integral and they are energy efficient the nadi shodhana nadi shuddhi enables us to be energy efficient internally we talk about energy efficiency externally and i have graham richardson from new zealand there with me i owe it to you always graham because he is the one who reminded me when i was in new zealand many years ago that the energy in us is as old as the energy of the big bang so the next time somebody asks you how old you are today i'm it's my star birthday yeah how old you are i'm as old as the big bang energy wise we talk of energy efficiency externally put in these type of light bulbs put in this type of air conditioning you know we keep on doing all of this stuff are we talking about our own internal energy efficiency that is what the yogis wanted the external energy efficiency can be dealt with in the apara jnana apara means the non higher which means the common knowledge apara vidya apara vidya apara jnana can take care of external energy efficiency which is also important but the internal energy efficiency you need the para vidya para jnana 
which is the higher wisdom and the higher knowledge, that alone can take care of it. Let's go through a practice. Okay? Ideally, we should be performing the Mukhabhastrika. So, a deep breath. Tomorrow, I'll, I'll teach you this tomorrow, okay? I accept I have jumped the gun and not done this at the right time. But once we do it tomorrow, then you can put the pieces together. And we have, looks like we, we are still going to have some time uh, online, okay? Breathing out. Breathing in, low, mid, high. Lifting the head up in the birthing process and coming up, taking up the Vishnu Mudra, breathing out, now through the right nostril, in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hold, two, three, four, out, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hold, two, three, four. In, left, two, sorry, in, right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hold, two, three, four, out, left, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, hold, two, three, four. In, right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hold, two, three, four. Out, left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hold, two, three, Four now six in two three four five six hold two three out two three four five six hold two three in two three four five six hold two three out two Three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. In, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Now the four. In, two, three, four, Hold two, out two, three, four, hold two, in two, three, four, hold two, out two, three, four, hold two, in two, three, four, hold two, out two, three, four, Hold two. Now in two, one, out two, one. In two, one, out two, one. In two, one, out two, one. Now right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now starting to go as fast as possible.
start to slow down in out in out in out in out in out now in two one out to hold in to hold out to hold in to hold out to hold now in two three four hold two out two three four hold two in two three four hold two out two three four hold two in two three four hold two out two three four hold two now in two three four five six hold two three out two three four five six hold two three in two three four five six hold two three out two three four five six hold two three in two three four five six hold two three out two three four five six hold two three now in two three four five six seven eight hold two three four out two three four five six seven eight hold two three four in two three four five six seven eight hold two three four out two three four five six seven eight hold two three four now ten in two three four five six seven eight nine ten hold two three four five out two three four five six seven eight nine ten hold two three four five in two three four five six seven eight nine ten hold two three four five out two three four five six seven eight nine ten hold two three four five now the twelve in two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve hold two three four five six out two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve hold two three four five six now taking in a deep breath the jalanda bandha releasing the bandha and the mukha vastrika three times
breathing in and coming up. Relaxing on your side in the Dishpanda for a short time. Letting the energies flow. We have opened up the pathway. Let the energies flow as they are meant to flow. Channels have been cleansed. All the blockages have been removed. All the leakages have been sealed. The channels can flow with the energy in the most efficient manner. Enjoy the opening up of these channels. Enjoy the flow that can occur through these channels at this point. A sense of stability, a sense of ease that comes from opening up of the energy so that we can connect seamlessly. Ready, slowly coming out of this Nishpanda, coming back to a sitting position. We'll conclude here today a sadhana that is an individual sadhana where one needs to work on this wholeheartedly. And at that point, the real Nadi Shodan, the Nadi Shuddhi starts to manifest. And the energy flow, we connect with something that is so expansive that we realize that we are not alone anymore. We are all one. We are not different from the universe, but we are one with the universe. The avidya, which is the root mala, the Tirumandiram, the Tamil scripture on yoga tells us, mummalam, anavam kanmam mayai. And these are, these are the malas, these are the type of malas, the avidya, the ego, all this illusion that comes, that we are separate. Separatedness is an illusion. But what has happened is the mala, the impurity is so strong, so blocked up the system that we have forgotten the connection. We have lost our connectivity. And that is why when we purify the psychic channels, we can once again connect. And at that point, a sense of ease arises within us. I'll be back on my personal page in a few moments for the global prayer. Got a bit delayed today, but sharing these teachings is so important that I think a few minutes this way or that way, it is okay. Hello, that's it.